Uh, okay, as has been requested on the uh, the Robox forum, as I offered, is a quick uh, overview of how you disassemble the dual material Robox head and how you would go about replacing uh, the heaters, the heater block, and the uh, titanium bridge uh, if you happen to have a uh, a leaky extruder or uh, or both leaking. Um, so first thing is you need to take out one, two, three, four, these five screws here. I think they are a one and a half mil. Let's see. Nope, they're a 1.3 mil uh, head. You need to be really careful of these. Some of these are quite tight from factory. Um, I've already loosened them all off, so it's dead easy to do. So we pop the lid off, and that's what you see inside. Um, what I'd recommend doing as well. Yeah. Move out. Ooh. I don't know whether you can see that, but I would Dremel with a cutting disc a slot in them to make them a slotted head. It's so easy to round off these and then you can't get them out and it's an end. So I'd really take your time in trying to loosen them off and use a really good quality uh, hex bit. It's not worn at all at the edges because if it's worn it'll just start to round inside and yeah, it's a nightmare trying to get them out. Right, so what you see then is, is this assembly here. Uh, I'm not going to completely disassemble this one because this is one I've just repaired. I don't particularly want to take it apart again. Um, but I'll take most of it apart. So first thing is just lift the fan out of the way. Take a note of way the cabling goes. It's the this main power lead sits underneath the flat ribbon cable in the channel, uh, and the power to the fan it's in above and over the flat cable. Just pop that out and then the whole thing just lifts out like that. Uh, next thing you need to lift out is the LED portion at the front. That just pops out of that little slot down there. And slide out the PCB from here which can be a bit of a pain sometimes. So sometimes you just get a screwdriver and lift. There you go. So that is that's the head disassembled. So next stage is these bearings. Pop them off. Uh, I bet I've not got my pliers handy now. Uh, no, I'll cut back in a minute and go and find them. Okay, found them. Uh, so thin pliers, needle nose pliers. Pop that spring clip off. Let's get that away. Nothing to do with it. Uh, spring bearing comes off. Pop them in there for now. Good practice to have a tub for all the bits. Uh, right. The next bit to come off is part of this heat assembly here. Uh, again, at the moment I've been a bit lazy. Oh, you know what? I'm lying. It's not 1.3, uh, it's 1.5. Just get the 1.5. Right, hopefully, no more tool mishaps. So, yeah, I've been a bit lazy and not uh, slotted these, but I've been lucky so far uh, that they haven't rounded. So, yeah, the 1.5, not 1.3. And just ease these off. Like that. And this one here. There we go. Right. So what 
you'll see in here is two titanium heat bridges, uh, some PTFE tube. Now I've already modified this head a little bit. What can happen is this PTFE tube, I'll have to pop one of them off, it normally only goes to here uh, and then there's a sort of slightly square bit. This channel is obviously is square not round and it goes from square profile to round here uh, and this is not perhaps even oval to be honest uh, and the filament comes in and then it goes out of the, out of the uh, X carriage into this wider area here and then back into the Bowden tube and, and down to the heat bridge. What can happen, and it especially can happen if you're using something like PLA with ABS, uh, is you get heat soak in the head eventually. Um, um, the PLA, even though, you know, there's, well actually that's another thing, there's not always a lot of good quality heat um, thermal paste on, on here. So I've actually put on some high-end CPU silver thermal paste. Um, which helps but basically what happens is because you've got these hot things the heat sink onto here yes the fan runs a lot of the time and keeps this cool but this end still gets maybe 40 50 degrees maybe a little bit more and what happens is if you're using say abs in here at 120 that's uh, sort of uh, 245 degrees print speed pla at 195 perhaps using a pla is a brilliant support by the way because you can if you're using ABS because you can drop it into hot water uh, after the print uh, sort of semi boiling you know just off boiling water and the PLA softens and will just peel away from the ABS really really well uh, the only the problem against doing anything like that is when you're using a hot material on this side the head gets to a point where the PLA softens here and I put some posts on the forum about this and what starts to happen is it, is it buckles and you end up with it sort of expanding and seeping and, and squaring off in here and then you end up with a situation uh, I've not got a piece of filament to hand but the filament is squared off um, you can imagine just before it goes into the tube it starts to square off here so it can't go forwards and you end up with a jammed filament and you can't eject it either because it's trying to pull back a squared off area against the round profile so you end up with and there's pictures on, on another thread that I did. So you end up with a, a circular filament with a swollen, squared off blip in it, and it won't go either way. And then you have to disassemble that and that and there. Which is why I think the guys on from Cell say, you know, don't use PLA and ABS because they're not really that compatible. But that's the reason why they're not compatible. They're bloody brilliant as a support material because they're so dissimilar. They don't, they don't stick to each other. So you can use zero Z height and when you put it in hot water it, it softens so you're just peeling it away so easy it, it, it's just really good anyway so this what I decided to do to stop this is I put in a uh, longer PTFE tube so it sits in the heat bridge careful not to shove any uh, any paste in there uh, and what I actually do is make it longer than is necessary and then when the, everything's all assembled again cut it cleanly with a knife and basically what you're doing is the filament's coming straight out of the X carriage now um, and it, it goes immediately into the Bowden tube and doesn't have an opportunity to sort of swell anywhere uh, especially if you cut this perfect when it goes into the X carriage it gets pushed tight against the, the two holes that come out yes these holes are slightly elongated to deal with the uh, the nozzle rocking from one to the other but I've not had any problem uh, with it stopping the head rotation or not working I've done some really good prints uh, just as an example here's part of a skull I was printing for a laugh uh, this is PTG we've printed at 245 uh, and this was PLA uh, and for a seven hour print the PLA didn't uh, go off in the Bowden tube and then get stuck and then only do a bit of the support material it printed fully. Um, <coughs> a workaround for that if you don't want to do any of that mod at all um, is if you're going to print with PLA as a support material print your model and then print a tower of 
PLA or something. So it's constantly, as you're printing your main object, it's constantly using the PLA and keeping it flowing through the head, um, so it's less chance of swelling. So if you're going to do this, this bit of a skull or whatever, you print a tower that big. You know, only has to be a centimeter square uh, at the same time, and it would just stop the material from uh, from going off. The the only issue can no 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 it's fine. Even don't don't print the tower only up to the point where it stops using the support material. The tower needs to be as tall as the model because even though it's not using this material, it will slowly be baking and swelling inside here for the rest of this print from here onwards. So you need to print a tower that's that high, uses the PLA constantly, keeps it flowing through the head and stops it jamming. Anyway, that, if I put that in boiling water now, this stuff will just peel off. Like you wouldn't believe, it's brilliant. <coughs> uh, there's a bit of a digression there, so, so yes, that's well worth doing. Uh, and also get some high quality PTFE tube. Um, I've just bought this stuff. You can, you know, experiment. But it's got a slightly thicker, thicker wall. It's supposed to be, it is two mil and three mil OD. But compared to, uh, not that. That's a, that's another good piece of it. Uh, where's the original cell, cell, cell stuff? Um, this is quite easy to pinch whereas this is much, much more robust that'll squish dead easy like that that won't so it's worth using higher quality uh, PTFE tubes as well anyway so how do you disassemble this to uh, replace all the heat a bit right so the first thing I've got all my tools now Nice tool, tool bit holder I printed in PLA. Uh, let's grab that. Pop these screws out of here. So I'm going to do this, but I'm not going to go all the way and disassemble this completely. But pop these out. see on this head just while we're at it that's two ways of doing it you know I just decided to cut the wires and, and solder them together here and put some tape around them uh, you can, it's a little bit more awkward you have to use a really small solder iron and be really careful but you could pull the whole wire the, the, all these wires by the way one's the heater and one's the thermistor you could pull them off and then it's just a bit more awkward soldering the wires through the PCB you know it's obviously some delicate microchips and circuitry and you've got to be good at soldering otherwise you make a right mess um, but yeah that's the heater that failed on mine I only had to do, uh, do one initially and then uh, the other one failed um, for this one just because it's easier access I've soldered it straight to the board but this one's a little bit tricky you're trying to get in there and not melt this, this cable connector with the soldering iron tip so that one I've spliced. So we actually pop these out. Like so. Right, now something you've got to be really careful of here. When you pull this apart, you'll find that uh, you have to look right down there and it might be that it won't pull between the two needle valves that are running either side because of the plastic nubs that activate the, uh, the needles. So what you need to do is just push on this tab here. And it's usually better to do this while it's still got a screw in, in there, but I'll have to hold it. And push that round ever so slightly. And get it to some sort of position where it's easier to manoeuvre this, this thing out. So a bit further round. There we go. So you've got to take your time with this and be, be careful. There's lots of things that can come unsoldered dead easy really easy to um, these these heater blocks the, the way the power leads go to them they, I don't know what they're held on with um, but they're connected to it and it's dead easy to, to break these off and then suddenly you'll find you put all the head back together and the nozzle won't heat up and it's likely that you've broken off the contacts on the heater luckily these are pretty generic uh, so if you haven't got any more spares and you have broken one you probably buy one off eBay and fit one potentially Anyway, so that should 
pop off a bit easier now, like that. There you go. Now the next thing to be super duper careful of is this tiny little micro switch here, which operates like that. It is so easy to snap that plastic thing off and then that's it. The head will not detect whether it's a left or right nozzle, you'll get nozzle control errors, that's it. Uh, I have managed to source these because I broke one or two on my heads when I didn't realise how delicate they were. They're a Panasonic switch. Um, I might put, put the detail of it in the video description, but you can buy these and basically you have to, if you snap it, you unsolder it there, there, there and there, solder another one on and then you should be okay. But these PCBs, the, the tracks on them, they're not, they're not great and they're very easy to damage. Um, so the least amount of work you can do on these on these PCBs the better in my opinion right so once that is out and this is as far as I'm going to go disassembling it, this one now because I want it to work when I put it back together is grub screws here one and a half mil one and a half mil undo them and those brass things will slide clean off uh, what else have we got Uh, I'm pretty sure at that point you've got this this metal stabiliser piece here. You can see mine's not actually sat back perfectly. It's normally sat across here. Just bend that back a little bit, and then carefully, if you if you leave it in here like that. You just have to be careful that these springs don't ping off. I don't think they do. Uh, it's a, you have to put a little bit of force on it. You definitely don't. You don't want to be doing it that way because you'll snap the titanium heat bridge tube. It needs to be only, only sort of that way, and the whole lot will just lift off like that. Uh, and then you'll have obviously this come away, the heater blocks come away, and the nozzle come away. Uh, and then that's basically. You know, you un unsolder or cut the power and the, th and the thermistor connectors. Um, one thing to note, actually, uh, while we're doing it, is this is a five. Put I don't know if you can see it on here. It says Rev 5.1. On these boards, they've just redesigned the layout slightly so that you have. Uh, where are we? We've got T1 and T2, T3 and T4, uh, P1 and P... I can't quite read it now. Uh, uh, yeah, basically you've got the ones with P on on this side, I can't remember what they are, P, P3, P6, T1, T2, so that's, that's the thermistor connectors, and that's the... Um, the heater block there the heater connectors and that's for that side uh, and on this one uh, it's I think it's the other way around confusingly yeah it's power at, power at the bottom and thermistor at the top um, so the way to remember it is the ones with P the two the two contacts have got a P on them they're they're power for the um, the heater and the ones that have got T on are for the thermistor now on an earlier on earlier boards, which you might find in some heads, it's a revision 4.3 board, and it's they've obviously re revised it and made the design a little bit easier for the manufacturer. But it, on those, you have power for one nozzle on here, power for the other nozzle here. So you have wires going that way and that way. And then you have the two thermistors, so one set of wires went that way and one set of wires went that way. So. I, they just obviously revised it, made it a bit more elegant. So you've got power and thermistor on one side for one nozzle, power and thermistor on the other side of the other nozzle. Uh, so yes, so what you would what you would then do, obviously, you know, you lever lever this off, uh, and you should end up with uh, this. As I was saying, you should end up with something like that, and this is the other one out of the other head. So the whole lot will come away like that and you can pull it out. And then basically it's just a case of getting 
a known good heater block um, and thermistorings. Thermistors, by the way, uh, a pal guy palindrome on a robot, so he's managed to get one of these out of here. I'm not entirely sure how he managed to do that. Uh, but yeah, you really don't want to damage those look were quite tricky to replace whereas the, the heater element is pretty straightforward if you break it it doesn't really matter you can you unscrew this uh, screw again worthwhile slotting it so it's easier to do in the future without rounding it just lever this open and that just pulls straight out uh, interestingly i it, there's there is some kind of cheapo heat paste around it i put some high-end cpu stuff in there again uh, and the heater block you know, that jumps up in temperature early on if you're firing up in automator for example we're like five degrees per you know change on the on the display rather than three so it you know, if you can make a really good thermal contact there and make sure that's tight when you put it back you might find the head heats up a little bit quicker um so yeah this one this one um failed uh and it was all leaking out of the top of here uh, that one's knackered that's the titanium heat bridge uh, come on to that in a sec there's a, other, a couple of other things that are useful with that uh, and here's one here's the other one now yeah this one I've completely destroyed it really um, but what was interesting to note with this one obviously well uh, what, I've, what I've done with these as well if you want to remove any of the components you kind of have to heat it up uh, once you've taken it off, the only way of heating it really is over a, over a flame or using a you know, really hefty temperature control soldering iron to get it up to about 250-260 degrees and then you can un unscrew the nozzle. Uh, if you really want to unscrew the nozzles before you do anything, do that in the printer, heat the head up then take it off then unscrew the nozzle, it'll come out dead easy. If you try and do it cold, it won't. Um, so I, I heated this up, removed the nozzle. This side I just had to hit, because I was still loads of plastic in there at the time. I had to just heat this up on an oven just to melt it a little bit and then you can just pull the needle straight out. Uh, and what I found, which is what I was saying on the forum, was no wonder that this particular head leaked. Uh, because so that's the top. You see, you see it's threaded in there. And so that's threaded as well. But, there we are, oops, oh, it just pushes in, there we are, I can almost get it, if I wiggle it a bit it'll go fully in, so, yeah those threads aren't great, uh, that is jammed now, jammed. I'll grab it with these, twist it around a bit, Oh, I've cross threaded it now, it's not going to come out. Oh, there we go. But yes, that being held, that obviously does not seal, the threads don't seal, that's not going to seal. And what had happened with this was plastic had oozed all out around here. Uh, what then happens is, uh, which way around are we? Right. Right, yeah, I've, I've loosened that. When it's in its shut position, this brass collar sits like that, and the needle valve, if it was in the right place, that's if I hadn't loosened it off, would be sat right in the nozzle, stopping it opening. What you can see has happened when it's leaked, it's leaked plastic, and it's eventually solidified on, on here. So, what you can start to find is when that goes back and everything's in the right place, it won't go back far enough under the spring pressure, and you'll find that your nozzle never seals in it. And it oozes constantly out of there no matter how much you try and adjust it because it's out by so much and that's basically what happened on this head this let me get this the right way around there we go this heater block oozed first quite dramatically all around around there as you can see it's so much so that it oozed all the way across here bridged the gap between them and then onto here and then stopped this one sealing and then with that being a bit a bit looser as well I, I suspect that one might pull out if I really tried it, if I took all this plastic off. This one also was oozing from underneath here, so yeah. 
demonstrative that is foobar. Uh, um, it's not German, as the guy thought in Saving Private Ryan. Uh, go look it up if you want. So they, they are ruined. Um, not a lot you can do about it really. Uh, might be some useful bits on there for a bit, another build later. I don't know. But anyway, so you you've got your head disassembled. These have come out. Simple case of assuming that you haven't done something like I've done on the donor head or the donor parts and, and changed any of this lot and the orientation of it and everything. Uh, it's a pretty much a straightforward case. Of this will come out as it is in the right place. Plonk that in there. You, you sleeve the brass thing with the uh, the hex back down the shaft, tighten it up, uh, and then do the same for the other one. Uh, if you've cut the wires, then you'll have loose wires like this, uh, or if you feel a little bit braver with the soldering iron down there, um, you won't have any cut wires, and you can just unsolder everything on here, pull them off one by one, use a solder, solder sucker to make it so it's a clean hole straight through, and just re-solder all the wires making sure you get the thermistor and the power one the right way around. Uh, and then it's just just a case of reassembling. And reassembly, that's the point where you're messing around with this circuit board and this piece, and there's a really good chance you'll snap that switch. So you've got to be really careful with it and sort of orientate it the right way, check that switch, and then just push it in. And you can see I haven't damaged the switch, but it's dead easy, especially if this is in the wrong position. You've been like, I can't get this out, and you've done it in a different way and forced it a bit, it'll jam. Couple of things to note here as well as the little plastic sleeves over there. Make sure you don't lose those. Put this back on. <laughs> this is definitely a job to do when you're not rushing or you know you haven't really got time to do it. Give yourself a good, good a good couple of hours to to get it sorted and just take it easy. That's that one in. Don't over torque things either, just just nip them up. Yay! I've lost one of the screws. Now there they careful when you're putting these back not to crimp the wires or nip them. There we go. Put those back in. Now, something that I'm tempted to do on here is these uh, titanium heat bridges they're a pretty tight tolerance for uh, in terms of filament uh, so for example not that I'm sponsored by rigid ink in any way but I have some rigid ink PVA here and I've never really been able to get PVA to, to flow properly. And I'm sure it's because the filament diameter, which I'm going to measure right now with PVA, because it's absolutely notorious for swelling. Using my aerospace grade calipers that uh, give you a different reading every time and you have to average it. So, what's that? So, that's 1.85 mil. 
I think. No wonder that won't feed. And what? I mean, even if I dried it out, I'll just pick a random point somewhere else. What do we get? 1.84. Somewhere else. Ooh. I've got 1.75 then. Oh, but uh, zero is now on to minus 0.3, so let's have a look again. Yeah, 1.82. So, yeah. PVA, it's a tricky filament. It does absorb water and it swells quite easily. Um, I'm not dissing rigid ink for say, sending me something that's a bit over spec because um, it generally it's used as a support anyway. The problem is, here's a, here's a snapped titanium heat bridge, all in the name of science. Now it goes in that one, that's because I've widened it. But if I try putting it through here, I suspect it will be. Not, yeah, it won't go. Goes through a little, perhaps a little bit, uh, but it's really tight tolerance, and then is that it? So, I, don't know, I might, I might do it. I don't know. What I was thinking was the tapered drill bit here. It's actually for a milling machine, but it, it's tapered, which is quite nice. Um, Thinking of just widening them out a little bit, because uh, basically what you've got is the filament that's coming up to it. It's two millimeters in diameter uh, inside, three millimeters outside, and that basically leaves room for it to swell a little bit more, especially if it's PVA, and then it just won't feed through the titanium heat bridge and you've had it. Uh, Perhaps one of the only other ways of maybe getting it to work might be to um, you know sand down a decent length of this so that it's you know nicely down to below 1.75 so that it'll easily go through and perhaps once it's started to feed through and the heat from the heater block will get past here and soften the filament a bit it might be soft enough that it'll just compress a bit and go through there might not. Um, Do I really want to drill it right now? Um, no, no, I'm not going to. I'll try that another day. So I, I actually ordered some drill bits. Um, a 1.9 to just to widen this out. I mean, you've not got much wall thickness on there before you through it, so yeah, 1.9 might do it just to widen it a bit. But the, uh, we've, got, we've got lost in the post, so no, nah, I'm not going to do it. Main reason is because I've got to get to about here on this drill before I'm going to wind them, and that's like well inside in, it's going to mangle everything, so I'm going to leave it. Uh, eagle eyed amongst you might have noticed as well that these 0.4s are suspiciously wide. Right, so I just drilled them out with a high quality drill bit after taking the nozzle off, the point 0.8 uh, needle valves you know, th this was all done once it was assembled and tested it wasn't leaking uh, the needle valves still seal fine on the on the inside and as long as there's no swarf from when you were drilling it um, I've now got a dual point 0.8 head which is really good uh, for doing bigger prints and where well, you don't need fine detail you can get things done significantly faster uh, right, so drill. Ah, one other thing I could do because I got. Um, God knows where it is now. Uh, I've got some blue. some blue 1.85 millimeter internal diameter tube 
Um, I'm not sure where it's gone. Possibly put that in there. Um, let me see if I can find it. There we go. So, I don't know if you can see that. This is, I had to get a sample of this uh, from a very nice lady um, at a company I can't remember now, but I managed to blag a sample, uh, 1.85, because it's not a common size, 1.85 ID, 3mm OD. Uh, you can just see it's a slightly smaller diameter there. If I grab a little bit of filament. This 1.75 ABS will go in, but there's a lot of resistance to it. Um, which isn't isn't great really. But it was it, the positive side is it stops filament swell, um, but. I'm pretty sure that when I fitted this last time, yes it worked, but it affected the uh, the flow rate of the material such that you're having to put PLA up to a flow rate of perhaps nearly 1.1 multiplier just to get it to be anywhere near what it would be on a, on a looser tube. So I'm not convinced this 1.85 stuff is definitely the right stuff to do. And with a thicker filament like this, not going to work and it's just going to cause skipping and yeah whereas you know your two mil slides lovely through that up until the point it gets to the titanium heat bridge where it won't go through so they could definitely do with drilling out um, but I can't do it at the moment so that'll be for a future video what I'm going to do though is, while it's here, I'm just going to replace the PTFU tube because it's a bit tired with some new stuff that I got, which uh, is, this is some other stuff I got, which is better than the Robox OEM stuff, but still a bit squishy, whereas this is, is even tougher. Uh, so I'm going to use that. So what we'll do is measure the piece like that, make sure it slides nicely on the left hand side there. There we go, that's in there. Like I say, just give it an extra bit. Hold it. Uh, and then same for this side. with this head when I'm replacing it. it wasn't, this material just wasn't quite going in as nicely into the uh, area. back on uh, advise you know thermal paste replace the thermal paste with something something really good like some high-end CPU heat sink paste 
Uh, this PTFE tube, if you're going to do the mod, you've got to grind out, as you can see, I'll have to grind it all out here, and you have to grind it out in that channel so that you can do exactly what I'm doing here. If you're going to do that, be super careful and block off with, I don't know, a little cotton bud or something the entrance to the titanium e ridge because I'm sure a load of mm, aluminium -y alloy perhaps, zinc, I'm not sure what that is, dust going in there and then through here, yeah, you don't really want that. So shove that there. Uh, and I'm going to put these screws back in here. Don't obviously it's a bit like that. A bit like doing a head gasket on a car, you know, you don't torque them all up individually, you put them in gently, gently screw them together. Sometimes they bind and you get a bit of a cross thread, but usually it's okay. So then it's a case of putting this back in here. Uh, make sure these these wires are nice and pushed in towards the motor. Uh, then you want to grab this piece and slide it into the, the guide there like that. The LED bits. This should then take uh, this small PCB and slide that into its slot. I'm just going to pull it out again. It makes a bit of a mistake. I'll pop that out. You want to ensure that the fan is like that. Goes to this point. Shove that in there. Black wire needs to go under the base like that. Then the flat ZIF cable sits on top of it. That goes in there. Another thing to be careful of, don't trap uh, these motors against here or anything like that, or trap that. Um, I can't say this is definite, but I've done that on one head by mistake, and I think it burnt out the drive circuitry to the motor because it suddenly stopped doing any nozzle switching or anything. Uh, everything else is fine, temperature is fine, but I think I've jammed this cable in here perhaps, or against there, I don't know what I've done, but it, yeah. That head was foobar as well. Uh, you grab that, twist it, label side inside, uh, and that sits nicely in there. Sometimes it'd be a bit of a pain when the wire pops out, but generally it should sit like that. Don't worry about it being perfect for when you talk the case up, that works. Uh, <laughs> yeah, eagle eyed, I'm sure I've seen I've forgotten to put this on, so that should have gone on first, but hey ho. I'm going to get away with it. Slide that on. Thin one first. Ring. Uh, and then this circlet. Can I keep it all together and get the clip on? We'll keep okay again. Ooh, 
do. I'm not doing that too far. I'll slide that down there. And there's a there's a groove that the ring sits in. Pop that apart like that. Shove that into there. It should. There we go. Sat in the groove now. Just put that back in. Put the fan back in. Don't forget this piece goes in with whatever you want to call that bit facing that way. If you put it in that way, what you'll find is when you try and screw the uh, head CX carriage, it won't screw. So you have to take it all apart again and put it in the right way around. That goes that way. I'll slide that bearing on. And if you've got this clip in the right place, which is not hard to not get in the right place, there's a groove there, it should go and align with a little cutout in the plastic casing. Uh, right, and that is it assembled. Uh, is there anything else to think of? Yeah, careful with these wires. PCBs in, that's in. So let's put, put this back on. Now, usually what you'll find is it's a little bit of a pain to get back on in so much as it all looks like it's going together and then it usually splays here and all you need to do with that is this little LCD uh, PCB just needs just needs nudging around a little bit and it will sit in the slot on the opposite side as well and then it all clamps together uh, and then away you go one thing not to forget is there's a little spring piece that sits in the back of here I don't know where it's gone, but luckily I have about maybe in here somewhere. I'm going to use this one. So that needs to sit back in there like that. Uh, and that's it basically. So that's how you disassemble, uh, replace heater blocks, and reassemble a head with uh, some mods to help out with this uh, to allow PLA to be used as a reasonable support material without it swelling and jamming in the head. But to be honest, I'd also recommend for any print you do, just make sure whichever nozzle is printing the PLA, just make it print a tower the same height as the model, just to keep it flowing through here, to stop it overly swelling and going, you know, heating up and swelling and not flowing properly. Um, the only other thing I thought of was just to stop the heat transfer up to up to the up the filament up here. Was this this bit here? You could probably get away with drilling lots of holes in it and may, mm, bro, maybe holes in the plastic as well uh, so you might get a little bit of airflow around the back of the head down through here and it just come out the bottom and just perhaps cool this a little bit more I don't know um, you really need to go you know do a before or after with a thermal camera to see if that's going to do anything um, but yeah that's pretty much it I have to disassemble it, a couple of tweaks to make it less likely to gunk up with PLA if you're using another material that's a much higher temperature uh, and how to replace the heater blocks and the fact you can drill out the nozzles as well if you're careful to make them bigger diameter. Uh, if you are going to do that by the way, I tend to use the slicer extension or um, the pet, you know, well, slicer basically, uh, and in the nozzle settings for the head, you, know, you just change the nozzle diameter to 0.8, and you get the, the required flow. Then, if, if you use Automaker and you use the basic settings on that, and you don't go in and tweak some of the head definitions, Automaker will just assume there's still 0.4 mil nozzles, and you get loads of under extrusion. Uh, but yeah, that's it. So I'm going to put that back together now and put it back on my printer and carry on using it. I hope you found that useful. Uh, if you want to know anything more about the heads or a bit more detail or something wasn't clear just give us a shout uh, and hopefully that's been of use okay bye for now